Hi, I'm Scott Forsgren, and I've had my own 15-year journey through chronic illness. Uh, shortly after my diagnosis with Lyme disease, I came across the work of Dr. Richie Shoemaker in biotoxin illnesses, and that became a significant part of my getting to the state of health that I have today. I'm here with Dr. Raj Patel in his Northern California office. Dr. Patel is a Lyme literate medical doctor treating both Lyme disease and mold illnesses. So we're going to talk with Dr. Patel today about his work in treating biotoxin illnesses. Dr. Patel, could you briefly describe for us the Dr. Shoemaker work and how that applies to mold illness? Dr. Shoemaker has been doing research over the last 10 to 12 years, and um, we could kind of separate his work into three parts. Uh, first, he's been able to, through genetic blood testing, identify those individuals that are genetically susceptible to mold illness and more likely to become sick from mold exposure. Uh, the second part of his work deals with the uh, effects of mold exposure, um, the inflammation on the immune and endocrine system. So there are a number of blood markers that can be uh, done to look at uh, hypothalamic function, endocrine function, and immune function, which uh, are um, affected from exposure. The third part deals with the actual protocol to help reverse the, this immune damage and to help in removing the toxins from the mold. So I understand that you're using the Shoemaker protocol in patients with mold illness. Can you walk us through the steps that are involved in treating a mold illness patient with the protocol? The first and most important step is to make sure that mold exposure has been eliminated. So after doing appropriate uh, mold testing at home and at work, uh, you either have to move out or you have to make sure that the property has been properly remediated. Once mold exposure has been properly addressed, the next step is pulling out toxins associated with mold exposure from water-damaged buildings. And this is primarily done through a medication called uh, Questran or cholestyramine. Uh, this is a medication that's normally used to lower lipids, uh, blood levels of cholesterol. Uh, but it works very well in our mold patients because what happens is that it will bind to these mold toxins in the GI tract and prevent them from getting reabsorbed. So it's a good analogy would be pulling out the plug in a sink and allowing these toxins to go out. Uh, remember, these individuals are genetically susceptible and are unable because of um, their uh, genetic background to be able to mount appropriate antibodies to eliminate these toxins the way everyone else would. The third step involved is the actual repair of the endocrine damage. And uh, this is d done through a series of steps which varies with each individual depending on the level of damage that they have and what parts of the immune systems have been affected. So how is it that a protocol that's used for treating mold illness applies to chronic Lyme disease? My understanding is that chronic Lyme disease is a bacterial infection and generally requires antibiotics or antimicrobials in order to effectively be treated. That's a very good question, Scott. Uh, what we have to realize is that both mold illness and Lyme disease are biotoxin illnesses, meaning that they are characterized by an accumulation of toxins in the body that the body has a hard time getting rid of. These toxins in turn then trigger an inflammatory immune response, which is responsible for many of the common symptoms that we find with both mold illness and Lyme disease. These symptoms include things like cognitive impairment, uh, fatigue, bowel disturbances, and uh, joint pains and muscle aches. So it's no surprise that we find the same kind of immune and endocrine effects from biotoxin exposure with both mold and Lyme. And as a result, we've been very successful, as have many other physicians, in applying Dr. Shoemaker's protocol in helping our Lyme patients also. So in our conversations over the past year, you've been very excited about the results that you've been getting with your patients. Can you tell us a little bit about how incorporation of this protocol has changed the way your patients are recovering from chronic Lyme disease? No, it's really taken the, uh, the healing response of our Lyme patients to a whole new level. Um, while you still have to very aggressively identify 
uh, the Lyme and all associated co-infections and make sure that they've all been properly eradicated, including b bacteria, parasites, and viruses. Uh, we find that in instituting Dr. Shoemaker's protocol after the infections have been eradicated helps in the repair of the immune damage that's left behind by the Lyme disease. And as a result, uh, primarily through the use of VIP, vasoactive intestinal peptide, we're able to see restoration of the hypothalamic function, restoration of adrenal function, fatigue almost completely goes away. Uh, the bowel inflammation starts calming down so that um, a lot of food sensitivities and bowel symptoms start going away. Uh, testosterone levels, melatonin levels all normalize. So there's a really a dramatic improvement in the patient's sense of well-being, strength, and endurance as a result of instituting this protocol. Thank you very much, Dr. Patel, for being here with us today. We greatly appreciate your time and the wonderful information that you've shared with us. On behalf of Dr. Patel and I, we thank you for listening and wish you the very best of health and wellness. Thank you, Scott, so much for inviting me today. I've enjoyed being here and sharing this information with you all. If you have any questions or would like additional information, please visit Dr. Patel's website at drrajpatel.net.